Hello, this is a video about specific heat capacity, which some people find quite complicated because the equation looks disgusting, but it's actually not too hard once you get a bit of practice at it. So, specific heat capacity, the easy version of it is really how much heat energy something can store. Now you've got to think for a minute, what things affect how much heat energy something can store? Well, what it's made out of for a start might, might be an option. So if I've got a wooden block, that's going to be able to store a certain amount of energy. But surely if I make it bigger, that can store some more energy. So if I give it more mass, that will affect it as well. Or even if instead of wood, I make it out of gold or copper, surely that can affect how much heat energy it can store. Pretty much brings us around to the equation there. This is the more complicated version of what specific heat capacity means. It's the amount of energy needed to raise the temperature of one kilogram of a material by a degree. So if we are given a certain amount of energy, in joules, or you can measure in kilojoules as well. Remember, one kilojoule equals a thousand joules. Uh, this will enable us to heat up a certain mass of a material. So the specific heat capacity, you don't need to remember those big horrible units there, joules per degree centigrade per kilogram. Um, but the specific heat capacity of each substance you're testing will be different. So wood can store a different amount of heat from gold. And given this energy, it will enable you to change the temperature of something by a certain amount. So, let's look at our problem. So we've got half a kilogram of water is heated from 10 degrees to 100 degrees C. Uh, how much energy does this require if the specific heat capacity of water is 4,200? So, quite straightforward this one. So you're just going to take the mass times the specific heat capacity times by theta, which is the energy difference, uh, sorry, the temperature difference. So the temperature difference in this case is 90 degrees, which is the difference between 10 and 100 degrees centigrade. Times all these numbers together and we end up with 189,000 joules, which is 189 kilojoules, just in case I want you to do some conversions in the question. Next problem, you might want to pause this a video while it's playing so you can try and figure it out for yourself and then I'll give you the answer. So if you want to pause it, do so now. And welcome back. Four kilograms of copper is heated from 25 degrees to 125 degrees. How much energy does this require if the specific heat capacity of copper is 390? Once again, pretty straightforward. We've got four kilograms times 390. And the difference in temperature is 100 degrees centigrade. So times 4 by 390 by 100 will give you 156,000 joules. The question wants us to give it in kilojoules, so all we do is simply divide by 1,000. And the last but not least, a fairly tricky question. This time, uh, it's trying to figure out the temperature rise. We're trying to figure out theta. So if we've got 40 kilograms of aluminium, we're heating with 40,000 kilojoules of energy. Um, what will the temperature rise by if the specific heat capacity of aluminium is 900? So, first of all, we've taken our equation and we've put in all the parts of the puzzle. Now, some people struggle with uh, moving the equations around, particularly this one, because it has uh, three variables on one side. So, what always helps me is drawing it out as a triangle here with energy at the top. And whatever one I'm trying to figure out, I cover up with my finger. And there, in the triangle, you can see that energy is above mass times specific heat capacity. And that will give me theta, the one I've covered up. So this is exactly what I've written out here. I've got four, uh, 400,000 joules, 400 kilojoules, divided by the mass of 40 times specific heat capacity of 900. Be careful in your calculator. Uh, that you have 40 times 900 in brackets, and this will give us a, a temperature rise. Sorry, that's a mistake there. It should say theta is equal to 111.1 degrees centigrade. Okay, thank you very much.